Yes, we've sent out a newsletter this week, um, which uh, if you're on our mailing list, uh, you should have got. If you're not on our mailing list, it is free. Uh, you can sign up for it on our main website. Maybe we can put that in the um, in the <clears throat> in the chat or in the in the comments somewhere. But uh, this week we have a few interesting things. We always have some encouraging uh, ministry news about what's happening, and there's been all sorts of wonderful things happening. Um, Joseph and Glenn have been out uh, looking at the polystrate trees. Uh, and uh, looking at all sorts of other interesting things as well. So we've got a bit about that, and we've got a bit about um, people who have visited uh, the museum in Tasmania and the museum in Brisbane. Um, so it's always good to be encouraged by what's, uh, what's happening out there in the world. And then we have uh, various bits and pieces that we get from the scientific news, which is usually presented in the mainstream media as being evidence for evolution. And here is a, uh, an article about uh, genuine change in bacteria, because we all carry around a lot of bacteria in our, uh, in our digestive systems and on our other body surfaces as well. Now, most of these don't cause us any harm. In fact, they're good for us and they, they are now called the microbiome and they are an important part of, uh, of our biology. Uh, but it turns out that uh, some of these, and we've known about this for a while, if they get into the wrong place, they can make you extremely ill. So scientists have decided, well, what's the difference between the ones that make you seriously ill and what the ones that uh, behave themselves and stay in their place? And it turns out that for one species of bacteria called E. coli, uh, the difference is that the disease-causing ones have a broken gene. They can't make uh, a substance called cellulose, which we think of as being part of plants, but uh, other um, other living things do make it. Uh, and in fact, one of the scientists who did this study summed it up beautifully, the, <laughs> the good bacteria make it and the bad bacteria don't. Um, now that changes the surface properties of the bacteria and so that's why they can cause disease. So do have a look at that uh, for uh, all of the details. We archive all of these items <clears throat> on our fact file. That's a separate website. It has uh, a link to it from our main website, but you can just go to it, creation file, um, and uh, you'll find all of these archived individual items. You don't need to know when they were sent out in, in which particular newsletter. <clears throat> and you can do a topical search to, to find them. And then we had a story about silk. Now, did you know that silk is made by all sorts of other creatures besides silkworms, including these um, little prawn-like creatures called amphipods that live in the sea? Uh, and uh, some biologists decided, well, we try and fit this into an evolutionary tree. And this usually ends up being a fool's errand, trying to fit things into evolutionary tree. And exactly, um, it certainly was in this case. How do we explain how um, these amphipods that live in the sea and uh, silkworms and uh, various other insects, how did they get all of the right genes for making, for making silk? And uh, in a throwaway line, one of the biologists who was involved in this study said, well, trying to work this out and find a common ancestor between amphipods and silkworms, you know, that, that's what keeps me up at night. Well, we have an instant cure for that sort of insomnia. Forget about uh, evolutionary trees. Um, go back to what it says in the scriptures that God made everything according to their kinds. And, of course, being the designer of um the different kinds, he would have given them all the appropriate genes for functions that he wants them to have. So you can read some more details about this. Now, how valuable are you compared to snails? Uh, some uh, conservation scientists did a study in Australia uh, asking people uh, what would they give priority to saving in the case of a bushfire or a wildfire uh, if you only had one opportunity to save uh, either people, animals or buildings? 
Um, and naturally enough, they uh, people went for saving people. But uh, in this list of options that was given to them as to which would you be, which would you give the most priority to and which the least, uh, one of the options was a group of snails that if they got wiped out, that means that species would be wiped off the, uh, the planet or would be extinct. And uh, sure enough, people said that they would uh, give people, saving people the highest priority. That's not surprising. Uh, but the snail ended up getting a, or the snail species ended up getting a real thumbs down. It, it ended up with a negative score in the way that they scored the, the results of this survey. And the conservation scientists who wrote this article said, well, this is fascinating and troubling that people valued human life more than the extinction of entire non-human species. Interesting, isn't it, that if you have an evolutionary mindset Basically, human beings are just one blob of cells and snails are another blob of cells. Uh, and uh, how do you decide what has more value? It's only if you look at human beings and other living things from a biblical point of view that you get to know their value because ultimately the value of things is determined by its creator. So in the Bible, there is a statement from Jesus that we are worth many sparrows. Well, Australians will agree with that, and we also happen to be worth many snails. So have a look at uh, the uh, the details for that, and if we can.